You understand? You don't need to write it. To be fruitful, we must compare. Imagine, Jesus is a, is a perfect standard, right? Jesus is a perfect standard. So, if you strive and compare yourselves with that standard, chances are you aim higher. Because Jesus is perfect. Imagine, he was arrested, he was, he was scourged, right? And he didn't complain. Maybe we should imitate him. That's the imitation of Christ. But that's for next week. <laughs> that's for next week. For this week, what I'm saying is we must compare ourselves to the standard that Jesus has set. To be fruitful. Remember, if you don't have fruit, what will happen? You'll be cut down and thrown into the fire. You must bear fruit. Tuesday. I think I gave the, the every day I gave the words, right? Like forgiveness from the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, you heard that. Tuesday. Actions speak louder than words. Matthew 23. This interested charity. Are you ready for this? How do we know if we are really working for God? Who of you are working for God? I can't believe this. Who of you are working for God? Is God your boss? If you're working for God, God is your boss, right? But who am I? I'm only cooking three times a day. I'm only doing the laundry. Is that working for God? Going to Atlantic City is not working for God. <laughs> huh? Yes. <laughs> I think it's all good. I'll write it down. How do you know? You want to know? You don't expect anything in return. <coughs> then you will know that you're working for God. Whatever you do, if you do it out of love and you expect nothing in return, you know this reminds me, when I was a small boy, I don't know if I was the favorite, probably little bit favorite. My mother would always want me to be with her. And we had apartments and we would go get collect the rent. Or maybe she just needed somebody to be with her. Okay, but I, I went anyway. I was my elder brother did one, my younger one she was playing, so me, I would go. And there was one time we went to the one of the house, one of the apartments, and we saw uh, you know the LPs, those long playing albums? They were broken, they were scattered all over the floor. What happened here? And then they said, there was this, this uh, woman who, who would come here and do everything in the house because she loved one of the men living in the apartment. She would actually come and, and do things in the house. She would cook, she would clean the apartment, she would do everything. 
serving serving the, the man. But the man was not interested. Understand? And the man would simply, if, if, if he thinks that she is about to come, he will leave. He will leave the, other, the house. So she will come, she will cook for him, prepare the table, she will clean the kitchen. That really happened when I was small. I know, I remember very clearly. <clears throat> so, so when we realize that that's what happened, so why, why this mess? Because uh, there was one time she found him in the apartment. And then, and then he says, <clears throat> why are you doing this? I'm not interested. I don't want you. You understand? I don't want you. Because she, she really wanted him. Did you do that? And then, after the guy said that, because uh, she knew that he loved those records, she started breaking them. She got a, I don't know what she got, but she, she broke them. She broke them all. She got the records and boom, and all on the floor. And then she left. So we did not collect the rent. <laughs> expect something in return. <clears throat> I must admit I was embarrassed when such a good soul brought one first lupia, one tray to the house. <laughs> such a good soul. And it was perfect timing because I had nothing to eat and I was hungry. <laughs> there was no food. Because I live like a widower sometimes. <laughs> well, many times. <laughs> and what happened? You know what happened? Uh, I was a little bit embarrassed because I didn't, I didn't have anything to give. I didn't. But looking at this, well, maybe she was working for God. She wasn't working for me. She was working for God. And she expected nothing in return. Remember, don't worry about the return, because your father who sees in secret will repay you. Probably not just with one tray, but two trays. <laughs> when God repays you, it will be two trays. That's working. Willing to work for Him for nothing. It's a good, it's a good topic to reflect upon. You know that? I'm giving recollection on the 31st. I'm actually thinking of giving this. How do you know if you're willing for God? I mean, if you are working for God. That's something you can share with other people. When you expect nothing back. That's the meaning of disinterested charity. You are willing to work for God for nothing. Disinterested charity. Now, the second, the next, the second one is little misunderstandings, right? <laughs> so far, St. Peter's is very small. I, I, I get here, I, I put down the stuff, I go around the building, I open, I, I get through the main door, the secretary is there, the copies are waiting for me. So beautiful. But in my other class, it's not the case. I will get there, driving like, what, 30 miles, and then the door is locked, and nobody in, nobody has the keys, and sometimes it rains, and there's no place to, there's no roof to go to hide under. So I will just either stay in the car, or go by the, by the convent, where there's a little shade, and wait in the cold, and in the dark. Because the one who has the key sometimes comes very, very late, like 5 to 7. 5 to 7, only time can I get in. That's why I, I, I thought about printing that thing. Because I have no time to write that. Coming in 5 to 7, there's no time to write all those. 
last Sunday to next Sunday. Hence the idea. The idea of, I have to have this thing printed. That way, we, I don't need time to write. Plus, I save on this. Right? You don't have to give me, offer me so often. But I'm not expecting, you know, if somebody gives, it's fine. If somebody doesn't give, it's fine too. Because that's how it should be. If you're willing to work for God, expect nothing. Now, what about the misunderstandings? Now, look how I should look at that the misunderstanding. Where's the guy who has the key? The guy who has the key, where is he? How come the door is locked? How can I? I was invited to Paris to teach, and then somebody should open the door for me when I get here so I can go teach. <clears throat> but and then I thought back to myself, this is a little misunderstanding. I should be mature enough, and this will make me grow in my faith. This will make me grow in my maturity so that I can gain understanding of this. That's that one. In other words, we can say, we should welcome misunderstandings in the face of our doing good. And sometimes even people who work in the church, people who do various ministries in the church, they have misunderstanding. But what, what Matthew 23 says is, you must welcome this misunderstanding in the face of doing good. You're doing something good, and you must welcome such misunderstanding, because this world is not perfect, right? The world is not perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody is perfect. So expect misunderstanding. Are you ready? The Book of Wisdom, there's a Book of Wisdom in the Bible. The Book of Wisdom says misunderstandings are very much part of God's plan. Imagine that. The Book of Wisdom says the, uh, these misunderstandings form part of God's plan. Whoa. You want to see where it is? Get your Bibles. Book of Wisdom, Book of Wisdom, Chapter 2. By the way, whose wisdom is it? Solomon. The wisdom of Solomon. Chapter. Very good. Chapter 2, 16 to 20. Okay. We are considered by him. Are you there yet? Book of Wisdom, chapter 2, verses 16 to 20. We are considered by Him as something base, and He avoids our ways as unclean. He calls the last end of the righteous happy, and boasts that God is His Father. Let us see if these words are true, and let us test what will happen at the end of His life. You see that? Let us see if these words are true. What does that say? God is willing to test us, if what we say is true. For if the righteous man is God's son, he will help him, and will deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. Let us test him with insult and torture. Imagine that. Let us test him with insult and torture, that we may find out how gentle he is, and make trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to what he says, he will be protected. See? So misunderstanding is very much part of the wisdom. Jesus underwent that. Jesus underwent what else? He underwent, he was lied to, he was insulted, right? He was denied. What else could be? He understands all misunderstandings. So when there's misunderstanding, let's say with various ministries, with other volunteers in the church. It's part of God's plan. Look at it that way. It's part of God's plan. 
Next, number three, the crosses are a claim to, be, to glory. What is the best test? The cross is our claim to glory. The best test for you and for me. Look, Abraham went through this. You know what Abraham went through? Genesis chapter 22, from first reading last Sunday. <clears throat> can, you, can you pass the test? What if you need to be crucified for your faith? doesn't mean physically crucified. Maybe you are being insulted because of your faith. Well, the, the Bible says, Matthew chapter 5 says, Blessed are you. If people hate you, revile you for His sake. Right? You are blessed. So the cross is our claim to glory. We have to trust God that He really cares for us when He allows suffering because of our faith. Wednesday, Matthew 20. <laughs> In Matthew chapter 20, this is when Salome approached the Lord. John and James on either side, right? So Jesus says, can you... Can they drink? Can you drink from the cup I drink from? Oh yeah, where's the cup? Show me the cup. I'll drink from it. But that's not what Jesus meant. What Jesus meant was, if you want to be great, you have to be the servant of all. Remember that? The very first among you will be the slave. Ooh. What does that mean? Charity. Servanthood. Number, number one is seeking the limelight. What does it mean seeking the limelight? When somebody proposes something for you, what comes to your mind? What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Self-gratification. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, will I be popular? Will people acknowledge me? Will people know me? Will people be clapping their hands? Will I, will I get standing ovation? Will I get an award? Seeking the limelight. Will I be popular? Last week we were talking about hypocrisy. Remember from last week? The stage actor. Meryl Streep was the best hypocrite. She was awarded the best hypocrite. That's how they should term it. The best hypocrite of all, because she can make people believe that she was, she was not. So what's in it for me? You want attention? 